Good afternoon. I'm Archbishop Sok Villegas. I am the new president of the CBCP. And although I have faced you many times, this is actually my first time to call for a press conference with me as the principal resource person. So I hope you will be kind and gentle with me. Uh, the pastoral exhortation is currently being reproduced and uh, you will receive copies of it perhaps before the end of the press conference because we finished late uh, editing the pastoral exhortation. So I'll just tell you the story of the past week. Uh, 2014 is a year of the laity, and uh, this is in preparation for 21, which is the 500th anniversary of the first Mass and first baptism in the Philippines. So the theme is called to be saints, sent forth as heroes. And I'm inviting you to go to our website. It's choose to be brave.org. Choose to be brave.org. And uh, it has the program for the whole year. And uh, you can interact with the bishops through that same website. Choose to be brave.org. All lowercase and uh, no space. Choose to be brave. Uh, in the course of the meeting also, as uh, the CBCP media office has, has, has told you, we had a seminar on media, management, and me. And perhaps one of the highlights is our senior bishops who were a little bit uh, technology phobic, uh, were taught how to use Facebook, how to tweet, and how to use the internet. And it has been a worthwhile experience because youth, teenagers, uh, novices, seminarians, and uh, uh, nuns were the teachers of the bishops in this matter. And then we went into the business meeting and uh, the main concern during the business meeting is the poverty in our country especially on account of the calamity that struck Bohol, and then Cebu, and then Samar, and eventually Tacloban, specifically. So we are considering, uh, with the urging of the Holy See, to intensify Caritas Filipinas so that we can have a more organized response on the side of the church in aiding the victims of calamities. For your information, uh, in town is a representative of Pope Francis himself, Cardinal Robert Sara. He is the president of Cor Unum in Rome. And he is here as a personal representative of Pope Francis because he's not able to come, he sent his uh, senior cardinal in order to bring his blessings and his concern to the calamity victims in Samar and Leyte. Uh, in the course of the meeting also, we discussed the growing uh, problem of hunger in the world. We call for freedom from hunger but if that is the case, then we must consider food as a basic right of human beings. Every human being m must have a right to food. And uh, we also discussed the International Eucharistic Congress that will be held in Cebu in January 2016. One of the, one of the trivia that uh, was brought to our attention was in the course of the siege of Zamwanga, unknown to us, unknown to me particularly, I, I think unknown to some of our media friends. We had one priest who was with his parishioners the whole time that the siege was ongoing. And he led the evacuation and uh, for two weeks, literally, he did not take a bath because there was, no, there was no bathroom available. He could not even change his clothes. And then when his parishioners had settled down, 
he said he wanted to take a break, so he went to Davao. And uh, while resting in the Archbishop's house in Davao, he died. He died from exhaustion. He died literally serving the people of God. These stories we don't encounter every day. When, uh, when a dog bites a man, that is not news. When a man bites a dog, that is news. When a priest dies serving the people, sometimes we do not take it, we, we take it for granted. But uh, we cannot take it for granted. We must highlight the, the heroism of Father René Tabio of uh, Zamboanga. He, li he literally died from exhaustion serving the people of God. So the floor is open. Uh, beside me is Father Marvin Mejia. He is the Secretary General of the CBCP, and he takes care of our media relations. Anything that you need from me with regard to statements, you can go to Father Marvin. And then uh, to my left is Bishop Milo Vergara. He is the Bishop of Pasig. He is the new chairman for the Commission for Social Communications. So their titles will explain their presence this afternoon. So shoot any question. We just have some ground rules. Please identify yourself and the entity you represent. Go on with the question. No privileged speeches. You're entitled to one follow-up question. Let's begin. We have a microphone here. Yes, please identify yourself. Archbishop uh, Gerard Po from Alaya. Uh, Archbishop, uh, would you like uh, would you like to give a statement regarding the recently concluded yung, uh, peace pact signing between the government and the MILF? Any step towards peace is a positive step. The church exists so that there may be peace among men and women. And any step towards peace is blessed by God and is blessed by the church. Unfortunately, trouble has erupted again in Maguindanao. That is why Cardinal Cavedo did not finish our meeting today. He flew right away to Cotabato in order to attend to the people who are affected by the bombing. This is another threat to our peace and Cardinal Cavedo is there right now trying to see what the church can do concretely in order to bring back the peace in the area. With regards to the peace negotiations, pa rin po, what can the CBCP or the Catholic Church offer to the two parties uh, with regards to the successful na hanggang sa, uh, pag -create ng Bangsamoro law? The first contribution of the church to anything is always prayer. So if any of the two parties negotiating ask for our help, if it is within our means, we will certainly help. So whatever they ask from us, we are ready and willing to give. But uh, even if they do not ask for it, we are praying for the success of their negotiations. Next question from the floor. Yes, please. Archbishop, magandang hapon po. Abner Mercado po ng ABS-CBN. Archbishop, recently ang dami pong mga obispo at kaparian ang dumadalaw po kay dating Pangulong Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Ano po bang ibig sabihin po nitong pagdalaw pong ito ng mga obispo po kay dating Pangulong Gloria Arroyo? Alam mo Abner, ang pari ay tagapagdala ng blessing galing sa Diyos. Sino man. Siya man ay dating Pangulo o isang taong walang bahay. Siya ay nakabilanggo, siya ay may sakit na hindi gagaling, o siya ay isang kabataang nalulungkot, o siya ay isang nanay na iniwanan ng kanyang asawa. Ang lahat ng ito, mga taong nakakailangan. At ang tungkulin ng pari ay tulungan ang lahat ng nangangailangan. Hiningan yata ng tulong ng Pamilya Arroyo yung aming mga kapatid na obispo, kaya mayroon silang panahon, sila'y nagpunta ron. Kaya lang, sabi ko kahapon, dahil tinanong ako ni Leslie, kung yung ba ay representation ng CBCP, sinabi ko sa kanya na 
nagpunta yung mga obispo according to their prudent judgment as pastors. At sino mang, pa, sino mang pari na hinga ng tulong, kami ay mayroong obligasyon na tumulong. Ilan po? Yes, please. Do we have questions from the floor? Meron pa po kaya? Uh, siguro po, samantalang wala pang katanungan mula. Ah, yes, we have. Please identify yourself. Bert Ramirez po from the Manila Times. Um, Bishop, itatanong ko lang po kung um, may plano rin po ba kayong bumisita kay CGMA kung sakali po? Ang tanong ay, ano ba ang kanyang pangangailangan? So, kung kailangan niya ng blessing, siguradong mayroong taong simbahan na magbibigay ng blessing na kailangan niya. Kung hindi siya makasimba at kailangan niya ng misa para doon, titiyakin namin na yung kanyang pangailangan spiritual ay palaging uh, natatapatan. So, hindi naman ako hinihinga ng tulong. Hindi naman ako sinabihan na kailangan akong pumunta rin at humihingi sa akin ng blessing o kaya confession. Kaya masaya ako na yung aming mga kapatid na obispo ay nakaka nakapunta na roon at nabigay yung spiritual na help sa kanila. Pero ulitin ko lang, yon ay personal decision ng bawat pare o bawat obispo. Okay po. So i-clarify ko lang po, Bishop, um, kung sakali po, parang uh, hihintay lang po muna natin na invitation from the former president. Hindi naman siguro invitation kasi hindi naman party. You know? uh, kung nire-request ako na kailangan nila ng tulong kong spiritual, request, no? Uh, sabihin, pwede ho ba kayong pumunta rito at gusto kong makipag-usap o gusto kong madasalan o gusto kong mabigyan ng payo, bilang pari, dapat akong pumunta. Regardless of whoever. Hindi lang dahil siya ay pangul o dating pangulo. Kahit sino na humingi sa akin ng tulong, basta kaya ng aking panahon, ay kailangan kong tulungan sapagkat yun yung duty ko galing sa Diyos. Eh. More questions from the floor? Yes, please. Please identify yourself and the entity you come from. Pwede niyo rin talangin si Bishop Milo at saka si Father Marvin. Archbishop Nina po ng Inquirer. Sir, about the Yolanda, um, you discussed it uh, during the plenary. What are the specific details? Uh, I mean, uh, how about the other bishop? Did they commit anything? Uh, how to help? How the other area, other, the other reg uh, bishops from the other regions can help? Anong pangalan mo ulit? Nina Kalieha po. Nina. Alam mo, Nina, hindi naman namin pinablish, pero halos lahat na ng obispo sa buong Pilipinas ay nagbigay na ng tulong, unang-una spiritual, pangalawa ay material, at pangatlo ay presensya doon sa mga victims sa Samar at saka sa Tacloban. Uh, hindi, na hini, hindi na hinintay ang plenary assembly sapagkat ilang araw pa lamang ay uh, nag-mobilize na agad ng tulong. Kasama sa mga na traffic doon sa Matnog ay mga karitas ng iba't ibang dioceses. Ay oo, tapos na kasi yung relief, papunta na tayo sa rehab, no? So nagtatayo ng mga bahay, tinutulungan yung mga nasa lanta na walang bahay para makapagsimula sila ulit at tumutulong din in terms of money para makapagsimula sila ng kanilang maliliit na hanap buhay. Ah, uh, sa Ars Naisis ng Lingayan Dagupan, mayroong mga galing sa uh, Eastern Samar na nagpunta sa bandang Katarman. Nagulat lang ako sa kanilang pangangailangan sapagkat nag-o-offer kami, itatayo namin ang kanilang bahay na hollow blocks at saka yero. Pero ang pakiusap nila sa amin ay kung pwedeng pawid at saka sawali at nagtanong kami kung bakit. Sabi nila sa amin, nakita ho namin yung tatay namin, nanay namin, nasa gasaan ng lumilipad na yero. O na, na natamaan ng lumilipad na bato. Hindi ho namin kayang matulog sa isang bahay na merong alaala nung tumama sa ulo ng tatay ko at pumatay sa nanay ko. Yung pawid at sa kayong sawali, 
tama na ho sa amin sa pagkakataong yon. So kailangan nating pakinggan eh. Sapagkat hindi lahat ng maganda at matibay ay dapat nating ibigay. Merong, merong regalo na sa tingin natin ay maganda. Pero merong regalo na sa tingin ng mga tao ay maganda para sa kanila. At kailangan nating igalang yung kanilang damdamin sa ngayon. More questions from the floor? Yes, please. Si NJ. Pakilapit na lang po sa mikropon, no? For brevity. NJ Vland, I'm writing for National Catholic Reporter. So I want to ask the bishops, um, cause one of the priorities, one of the things discussed is year of the lady. So I also uh, I, I am concerned. Also, you ha you and Pope Francis has been talking about um, yung reaching to the unchurch or the ones who are marginalized and I, I also covered this meeting and there was a group called Catholics for Choice and there are several other Catholics who call themselves Catholics but are not exactly um, uh, attending church services. They are in short, they are they're not um, uh, coming to church. So um, was it discussed or is there any um, strategy? Because it's unlikely, I think, that they will log into the website. But are there, are there other um, plans to reach out to them? Because I know the bishop said that they want, several bishops have said they want to reach out to those who do not come to church. How are you going to do it? We have uh, Bishop Milo Vergara. You know, it's very interesting that uh, one of our uh, speakers was uh, uh, Mr. Bo Sanchez, no? and um, uh, he gave a, uh, a striking sharing uh, with regards to what he has been doing uh, during this uh, recent uh, months, if not the recent years, on his own evangelization program for the unchurched. Or for those people who have uh, um, not gone to church for a long time, no, and uh, uh, trying to reach out to them, and he has a program that runs every uh, Sunday. It's called the Feast. No? Actually, uh, when he was talking, I was so struck because uh, uh, I think it was two years ago when I was invited to celebrate Mass in one of his feasts, which was uh, in my territory in Valle Verde. And I saw the flux of people coming, especially young people. No? So um, I think he shared, because at that time, no, when uh, he was uh, doing the feast two years ago, they had like only 106 feasts all over the Philippines. I think if I recall when he was sharing during our seminar, uh, he said there are already 151 feasts no, happening every Sunday that uh, um, caters to those who do not go to church anymore or perhaps have uh, some sort of distaste no, for uh, uh, going to Sunday Mass in the church. No? So I feel this is one strategy that uh, our lay people, our lay evangelists like Bo Sanchez no, have been doing and uh, uh, we benefit also as bishops and priests no, from that sharing because we can also strategize in one way or another on how to reach out no, to, to those people. In fact, uh, just uh, uh, another point to follow that up, I was thinking uh, one of the priority programs of uh, the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines, PCP2, is the basic ecclesial communities. If we can adapt that strategy, to basic ecclesial communities and really go down no, uh, to the grassroots, I think that will bear much fruit. Any uh, follow-up? Uh, yes, uh, in addition to that, si uh, Bo Sanchez caters to young professionals. They are bored with long liturgies. They don't like, they don't like uh, masses that are too solemn and at times for them dragging. So we have we have initiated programs for hurting Catholics. 
disgruntled Catholics, angry Catholics. We are putting up programs for troubled Catholics, troubled friends we call them, because they are addicted to alcohol or to drugs or even to sex. We are reaching out also to the elderly, the senior citizens, that, uh, you know, in our age, we hide wrinkles. We don't like uh, white hair. We hide it. But there is something beautiful in wrinkles. There is something beautiful in white hair because it shows wisdom. It shows experience. And we, we want to reach out to them and tell them that they are very important in the church. Uh, we are also highlighting the unknown heroes, unknown saints, maybe catechists in villages or priests who struggle to improving the lives of the people. So all of this you will find in Choose to be Brave. But in case, in case they have really uh, an antagonistic uh, uh, feeling towards the church, it would have to be a one-on-one -on -one approach. Because even if the the social media is available, there is no substitute to one person reaching out to another person, sharing with that person the person of Christ himself. So, so as a follow-up, do you have, and um, make me know what is like a, a parang ballpark, uh, do you have an idea of what we are talking about in terms of uh, percentage or just in numbers terms? Um, some, some people have written that the churches are, are empty or some are saying, no, it's full. No? So what is the extent of this concern? We do not have the statistics, but uh, that is one of our plans to commission some research groups in order to scientifically study this uh, movement within the church and movement in the Philippines in and out of the church. But it is, uh, there is none available at this time, NJ. Questions from the floor? Yes, please. Hello, I'm Paterno from Rappler.com. Uh, Archbishop, just a follow-up question on uh, no, the, the bishop's uh, visits to, to GMA. How proportional do you think is uh, this batch of visits compared to the number of bishops who visit ordinary prisoners in batches? I don't get the question. How, 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 how proportionate? How proportionate is it? Um, because I read a um, Facebook comment uh, this morning that said, uh, we see bishops visiting GMA, but we don't really see this, uh, this number of bishops visiting ordinary prisoners, the poor ones. I think that is not a fair judgment. All right. You only count the number of bishops because the, the one in veterans is a high-profile detainee. That is why people notice that. When we visit ordinary prisoners, when we visit ordinary jails, we don't tell mass media, we don't tell the local press that we are visiting them. But we do visit them. And, uh, well, modesty aside, you can go to the three jails in the Archdiocese of Linga and Dagupan. And I can tell you that our, our inmates in our jails know me by name and know me by face. And uh, when I visit them, uh, our perennial joke is, uh, uh, Father, when are you bringing our acetylene tank? <laughs> It's that. I mean, and I am sure I am not the only one. I am sure there are so many other bishops who do their work quietly, visiting those in prison, and they are not high-profile prisoners. That is why they are not noticed. In addition to that, uh, we interviewed Archbishop Arguelles a while ago, and he said he has visited jails in Batangas, although without media coverage. He celebrates Mass, at the jails in his archdiocese. Just a follow-up question. Uh, well, on the social media, your, your seminar, what's the funniest thing you can remember from that seminar and what lessons emerged 
from those anecdotes. Bishop Milo, maraming funny eh. <laughs> Pero uh, for me, it's really funny to look and uh, witness uh, uh, old, or if you want to put it, aging bishops, no? Um, using their tablets no? and trying to post their pictures, taking their photos, um, especially since they are not experts also in trying to focus their cameras or their iPads, their cell phones, but we enjoyed the seminar. We really enjoyed it. And um, it's very interesting that during that communications workshop seminar, uh, we were accompanied by seminarians and sisters. No? And uh, they were smiling and, you know, uh, they were jesting also at us, knowing of our incompetency given uh, uh, the techniques of uh, social media. Questions from the floor? Do we have more questions? Archbishop, uh, I, I, ho I hope we'll have this statement ready in a couple of minutes, but can you give us a gist of this statement from the CBCP? We are in the middle of the preparation for the year 2021. And year 2021 is the 500th anniversary of uh, the first mass and the first baptism in the Philippines. And this year is year of the laity, and 2015 is year of the poor. So the theme of the letter is to bring glad tidings to the poor, and it is the joy of the gospel, the letter of Pope Francis, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, which becomes the starting point of the reflection of the bishops reaching out to the poor. That uh, we cannot remove the poor. The poor we will always have with us. But there is such a thing as dehumanizing poverty, which is not a part of the plan of God for humanity. And in this, in this regard, we must fight dehumanizing poverty because this is contrary to the plan of God. Well, I think the pastoral letter is better than my summary. <laughs> Uh, Archbishop, any assessment of the Aquino administration, which has hit its halfway mark? I would prefer to give my assessment personally to the president. And after giving my assessment to him personally, maybe I can share that publicly. Because uh, as a matter of courtesy, on a matter like that of assessment, uh, I think we should, we should give the respect that is due to the highest officer of the land, that we, we give him our opinion personally, and then after that, should it be made public. So any schedule of seeing the president anytime soon? None in my, this week, none yet. There is, there is no schedule to meet with him this week. No invitation so far? <laughs> no. None, okay. Well, with that, uh, we'd like to hear a few words from the Secretary General, uh, Father Marvin, on how the media could access you. You know our office at Intramoros. Uh, I am always available. No? If you need information concerning the conference, and I'll be available. All right. Father Marvin is always available. That is why he did not get married. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one. And uh, Father Marvin has two brothers who are also priests. But uh, his father is not a priest. <laughs> That's one thing for sure. Amusi uh, Milo, would you have any uh, closing statement this afternoon? Well, it's my first appearance here. I was uh, invited by uh, Archbishop Sokno and... Uh, um, I think given my uh, job as new chair for the social, uh, Commission on Social Communications, uh, there will be um, more um, uh, linkages no, with different diocesan uh, point persons no, for media ministry. No? And uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, uh, evangelize, especially given this new media at this time. The position has not changed. 
but the reaching out is added to it. So what it means is we might not see eye to eye, but we can work hand in hand for the good of the country. Let us not allow our disagreements to disunite us further because we have enough disunity already. So let us look for the things that unite us. That is the spirit. So we still keep the position that the reproductive health law will be harmful for the spirituality of our country. But we respect those who share a different opinion and more than that, we reach out to them and let us be friends beyond the RH law. Archbishop, for your message to everyone this afternoon, what will be your message? We look at you as partners, and I hope you will also look at us as partners. We are not just objects of your work. Let us be partners together in bringing out the truth, and uh, the truth must always be proclaimed, no matter what the cost. But the truth must always be proclaimed with much love. Because truth without love cannot liberate. Because at the end of the day, it is only love that will set us free. And with that, uh, we bring to a close this afternoon's uh, press conference. This statement will be available in a couple of minutes. It's already here. Uh, uh, Marvin, uh, Father Marvin will be able to give it to our media practitioners. This is Melo Acuna of uh, Ario Pagu saying thank you for being with us. Good afternoon. Let's pray for our country.